Hi guys, Zach here, and today we're going to be doing an interview with the Viper. I'm joined by Nelson, aka Masmora, and he's the creator of the Top Experts League. We're joined with the Viper as well, and we're going to be asking him some questions. So, Nelson, do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi guys. Um, I want to thank Zach and Viper for this opportunity. I think it's that are really nice that I can have you both here. And we want to concentrate these interviews not so much on the player itself, I mean, not on the Viper, but a little bit more on Orion. We yeah. want to know a little bit uh, about him. I mean, we all know his achievements in the AOC. We have read it everywhere. So we are going to try to ask Viper something about his life and not just about AOC life. So okay. Viper, thank you for accepting our invitation. Yeah, no problem. And I will just uh, start with asking you something about your hobbies. I mean, we all know you play football and uh, I know you are a Manchester United fan. Yeah. Um, and I would just like to know, uh, how serious are you about football? Is it something you really want to pursue or it's just a hobby? Well, uh, probably at this point it's, it's probably a hobby. Uh, well, we train like four or five w days a week, but uh, we, we want to, uh, we're on the top of the league, we're undefeated this season, so we are going for a promotion, but still it's more, it's more we're, we're not that high that we, I can't call it anything but a hobby. Okay. But yeah, we're, we're serious, but like, it's not like we're getting paid or anything to do it, so it's all just for fun. Well, but four or five times a week, it's quite a lot, I would say, right? Well, it is, but um, yeah, it's, it's still, you can't call it anything but a hobby. Okay. Undefeated in AOC and in real life, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you uh, considering going pro at Football Manager anytime soon? Dude, I am the best football manager player ever. <laughs> but if you're thinking in real life, then mm, I don't know. I could probably give yeah. give uh, David Moyes some tips or something, but he probably won't take my tips too serious. Unfortunately, if you, if you had the opportunity to manage any football club in the world, would you choose to manage Man United or would you choose someone else? I would choose Liverpool, and I would get demoted to the lowest <laughs> league in Liverpool. That sounds like a great plan. <laughs> yeah. But, like Liverpool is a threat to Manchester United right now, we should say. No, not at all. Yeah. They're just they're my they're the favorite team of my brother and a lot of my other family members, so I would love to see them pretty low. <laughs> is there a bit of family rivalry there as well? Do any of your yeah, other family definitely. members have a bit of big interest in football? <laughs> yeah. It's a football is a big thing in my family, and uh, me and my brother we are competing over our little brother. He's he is so far it seems like he's going the Liverpool way, but I still I still have hope. <laughs> Trying to convert him. Yeah, I say I say. I'm gonna play monk sounds and stand over his bed at night. <laughs> Hello. Wow, that's that is one image right there. <laughs> Do you have any other hobbies aside from football at all? Um. Well, AOC is probably the biggest hobby besides football. So yeah, well, I, well, not really hobbies, but I like to hang out with friends, watch movies, watch series, and just general basic stuff. Okay, but if you say uh, football is uh, just a hobby, do you do uh, anything uh, beside that? I mean, uh, do you work? Do you are you going to college or something? Well, at this exact point, I only part work in a business for my uncle, so a cleaning company, but I've been working at the gym. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, I haven't finished school yet because I didn't have any motivation, so I took a year off and worked instead, and I still haven't gotten back on the studying course, but I probably will in not too long. So we'll see, see what the future brings. And after, after that, if you finish school, are you uh, planning on going to college or just start to work? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not really a fan of studying and stuff like that. I struggle to find mm -hmm. the motivation to do it, but you never know what the future brings. So yeah. Yeah. Still young, it's you know. hard to tell. 
Yeah. You, you seem to me like the kind of person who's very motivated to just act and do something rather than studying for it. So, you know, you would just do practical things and you would just turn your hand to it and, and keep going until you get good. Do you think that sort of approach has helped you to become good at Age of Empires as well? Well, probably. That sounds logical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like you, Zach. Really? That's what you've done with your YouTube channel. I suppose, I suppose. Yeah. But this interview is about you anyway. So, uh, Nelson, <laughs> have you got any more questions? Yeah, I mean, um, if one wants to get an expert on AOC, as you clearly are, um, was there a time where you really played a lot? I mean, I would have guessed that that, that must have been a time where you really played a lot of AOC. Or did it just, did it just came kind of naturally to you? Well, I think I've had a shorter uh, improvement period compared to other players, but that's probably because I came into the game at a point where a lot of things were were discovered. So, but I still I played a lot at one period, probably for six to twelve months, where I played almost daily, a couple of hours, and yeah, I think if you need to, if you want to get really really good, you have to have the time to put the dedication down and really really go for it. And I had the urge. I played with, played with doubt, lost every time, got <laughs> mad, wanted to beat him, and yeah, just, just kept practicing. Yeah, just kept practicing and improved, and now I've reached a level that I'm pretty, pretty happy about. Okay. Yeah. We don't really see you playing all that often now outside of tournaments, really, um, because as as you, I remember you saying, there's there's not so much competition for you at the highest levels until there's a tournament coming around. So. In those t sort of down times, are there, is there anything else that you do aside from AOC to sort of keep your uh, sort of you know your RTS skills intact? Well, I like to play StarCraft 2. I think it's the it's the best RTS game ever made. Well, at least that I've played, and I really like the pace of the game. It's like Castle Age and Age of Empires is like 15, 20, 20 minutes into the game. In StarCraft, you could sort of call Castle Age uh, the seven minute mark. Or something. So it's just natural. The pace of the game is much higher. Uh, it's a much more demanding game, sort of in terms of details, because it's so unforgiving. And I just, yeah, I just love the game. Uh, but yeah, that's basically my only. Well, Football Manager and FIFA on PlayStation 3 and stuff like that. I guess you have to have good so, micro for Football Manager, right? Yeah. <laughs> so hard, so hard to move them even to the right wing, man. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Uh, I always wondered. Uh, we all know PKZ, uh, administrator from AC Zone, is your father. Who yeah. actually started first playing the game? Well, he started when I was like what, uh, eight or nine, seven, eight, nine years old. So it was probably him. Okay. But but he uh, definitely got into the game because he played it. Mm -hmm. And you just uh, came familiar with the game through him, or uh, was it? Uh, well, I. I probably learned all the basics through him but uh, once I started playing again seriously in 2009 yeah late 2009 then uh, he weren't of too much help I can probably say I think he actually had stopped AOZ by then uh -huh. and he, he actually made a comeback as I started playing a lot and he so, didn't play uh, uh, at all anymore or does he still play oh he plays almost every day now really okay yeah. <laughs> With the uh, RFR guys, right? Yeah, Swedish yeah. fellas. Good guys. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask as well is, obviously, we know you have two brothers. Are they at all interested in Age of Empires? Are you teaching them, trying to get them to, to play? Or are they not really showing any interest at all? Well, my little brother calls it a fag game. So, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, my bigger brother, he uh, he plays it now. He plays scenarios, actually. Oh, okay. He's more that, that type of guy. But he doesn't play too much, but yeah. He's played before as well, so... Oh, fair enough. My uncle, my uncle played as well, so we sort of have a little bit of AOC in this family. I've had my cousins and other two uncles try the game as well, and they kind of enjoyed it, but... Yeah, it's not. it's, not, it's basically only me and my dad who plays random map. Um, I want to ask you, um, I mean, AOC, we could call it an old game, it is an old game. Yeah. Um, 
why do you think it survived so long? And uh, we still see tournaments uh, after tournaments. Why do you think it's just survived so long? Well, it's just it's just a great game, I think. But uh, the only issues I see with it is the uh, peer-to-peer -peer connections. It's mm -hmm. getting really hard with the command line. Bad internet. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's part of it, partly why I enjoy playing StarCraft 2 if I just want to have some casual fun. Yeah. I think one of the uh, biggest things that Age of Empires is sort of facing at the moment for higher level players is obviously the command lag is making it a little less enjoyable. If that was completely, you know, taken away, then it would just be on on another level, really. Yeah, no doubt. Now, are you but, optimistic about the appearance of ACHD and uh, Forgotten Empires partnership and spectator modes and those all those stuff? Um, well, most of those. Um, things actually come in the user patch as well. But HD version obviously have some other advantages. And being the official support from Microsoft, that's obviously a huge advantage as well. But uh, for competitive play, uh, the only way I think Microsoft is going to bring the competitive people over to play on Steam and stuff like that, it would be if they host tournaments themselves or if there are any big tournaments on, on the HD version. Because now uh, the Tyrant sponsor, he is hosting now this tournament with fifteen, no, yeah, ten thousand, uh, ten thousand dollars, yeah, and fifteen thousand dollars was was for the Tribal Wars, and he also donated five thousand dollars for the WCL seven, and he also spit in a thousand euros in the GML that you hosted, Zach. Yeah. And uh, also he's gonna host more tournaments, so the future of AOZ is definitely bright. That I can prom promise for sure. You've answered There's my next question coming. already. <laughs> okay, yeah. You answered my next question already. I was going to say, are you excited for the future of AOC? But you seem to have <laughs> already gone on to that, so that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I would uh, just ask you something small about the league itself. Um, some AOC Zone member has just started a poll on it where uh, he asks, well, what are the predictions uh, for the winner? And we can clearly see you're ahead. Uh, I can check it right now. I think you have like 40% of the, the votes. Does that somehow um, makes you nervous or it's kind of a, of a motivation for you that you see many people believe Neo as a winner? Um, I don't really get affected by polls or anything like that. But um, it's obviously nice to see the people have faith in me, but... I think people overestimate me because I was very active during a time where a lot of experts were weren't playing too much and I was basically beating everyone at that time. Because so I was in good shape then, but I don't think nor Jordan, Ryut, uh, Chris Stout or one of those were really in top shape or very active during those times. So I think a lot of people think I'm better than I am compared to other players. I think that the league can be won by all four players, but I think yeah, the thing is, most people underestimate the skill of Jordan. I think he's going to be mm -hmm. the biggest competitor in the top expert league. Uh -huh. Nice to hear that. I mean, um, Jordan just came back from USA and he has had like this uh, crazy streak. Like, I don't know how many games he won straight without losing any of them. And uh, I just saw Riot uh, start started playing a lot again. He just told me he has a lot of free time now. And Chris, well, Chris has always been on top of AUC. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, uh, for this. And um, I thank you so much for having accepted the invitation and this interview, too. Yeah, no problem. And we all wish you luck for tomorrow for uh, the game against um, Chinese Kung Fu, which you are leading right now, 3-1. Spoilers. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. You are not leaving three one then. I don't know. And I don't know, Zach. Do you want to? Ask it's too late. It's they're too late. losing seven zero actually. Oh damn. Okay. Like, they're okay. playing from behind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. But th thanks a lot, Viper, for agreeing to do an interview. It's been good to talk to you. Thank you for having me. And yeah, thanks for hosting the Top Experts League as well. It's much appreciated. We we all appreciate these events, and you know every every little tournament, every big tournament, they all help to keep interest alive in AOC, which is great for everyone. 
Yeah, yeah I just want to say this is uh, the first part of interviews. We are, of course, going to interview all the other players. So be sure to check again on the menu on AOC Zone to see when the next interviews are coming. So thank you, guys, and see you next time. See you later.